You might know that for a good and successful company, you need a great product. You need also a great growth market, but you also undoubtedly need a fantastic management team. And we will talk about exactly this at Virgin Galactic because it's already there. Michael Coalblazer the CEO that came from Disney. We will talk Richard, we will talk Shamas, we will talk George Whitesides, all of the main key players in the management leadership. Here we go. Let's start directly with Michael Koglazer. He just joined the Virgin Galactic team as the new CEO. He will be important to create an experience that only Disney can create. Because, you know, this company, this content powerhouse, this experience magical kingdom with its infamous CEO, Mickey Mouse, is very known to create this, you know, secret sauce in your life that you go home with a lot of merch, with a lot of fun and with an experience that you will never forget anymore. And this experience, exactly this one, will be brought by Michael Koglazer. Well, we don't know that much. As of this conference call, we know that actually, you know, the guys behind Virgin Galactic like Shamas or other guys were absolutely blown away. So we can be super excited how the Virgin Galactic experience will look like. And I'm super excited because this guy, you know, has 30 years in a big, big corporation and he knows that, you know, safety is important, which, you know, most of you maybe might think this is a big risk. Well, you know, if you're thinking about that, you also need to think uh, that, you know, most of it that you can invest today is a huge risk, not only from the execution side or the general health safety, but also how you can ensure that a company have and can innovate. And therefore, I believe that uh, this shouldn't uh, concern you. Rather, it should concern you how to bring as much as money into this investment, because I believe that Virgin Galactic is tremendously undervalued. But let's stick to Michael Colglazer. He was also the lead behind the $2 billion extension of the Disney Park with Star Wars, okay? So he's not only thinking about, okay, how to, you know, maintain a great experience, but also how to bring it to the next level. So, you know, a $2 billion extension for Disney is a big deal in the amusement park direction. So I think it's a fantastic add-on for Virgin Galactic. Let's talk about Richard Branson. Well, how to say it? This guy is a guy with cojones, all right? This is what we would say if we would live in Mexico, because this guy, I will tell you a story about him. He actually thought that British Airways is not doing a great job in air. Okay, he just saw their service is bad, the experience is bad, uh, everything costs money in addition, and, and he just took a very calculated risk and bought one 747 and started operation with Virgin Atlantic. And it became so good, such a great experience with, you know, the invention of the upper class levels and so much more that he became one of the best airlines in UK. And, uh, you know, British Airways tried to bring him down, actually, but it was so hard for them because they tried all the dirty tricks with, you know, calling existing customers and saying the flight is canceled and you can rebook to a British Airways flight and, you know, this kind of thing. So you can imagine that this guy, 70 years old, went through things. And actually, he made a very clever deal. He went to to Boeing and said, you know, I want to buy in future some kind of big number of airplanes, but the first orders will be connected with my revenue. If I can make X revenue, which I believe I can, then, you know, I will pay the airplanes at full. But if I don't, 
then I want you to take back the airplanes and give me my money back. And you know, this is the deal that Boeing did with Richard Brand. So as you can see, he's really well calculating risks. And I think, and I hope that this plus his marketing and PR base that he brings with him can really, really benefit Virgin Galactic. And it will. I'm, I'm very certain about that. Moreover, you know, he founded so many companies. He is a guy that brings, you know, more of a entrepreneurial and gut thinking out of his mind and gut to business decisions, which is fantastic because I think, you know, a mixture of gut and intelligence and strategic is a fantastic bundle that you get at Virgin Galactic, okay? This is what you get. You get, you know, with Michael Koglazer, you know, a, more of a strategic mind, I think, you know, experienced mind, then you will get Shamas, a strategic uh, master planner, and with Richard Branson, a PR guy and serial entrepreneur, Okay, let's talk about Shamas. Shamas not only has a very, very difficult to pronounce last name, but he is one of the smartest guy that I know on Wall Street. And uh, he put by his own money, 100 plus million dollars into Virgin Galactic. So even think about that, even when he is thinking that this is a good investment, then we all as retail investors with our small money out there are much less into the risk than this guy, okay? However, you know, let's talk about his past. Well, well, he got, you know, a little bit of fame when he became one of the youngest VPs at AOL. And at that time, it was not so easy because, uh, you know, they did a very, very bad merger. The team was not good. So he, you know, had a very, very hard time, but, you know, he got out of it very very good so good that he became one of the lead persons at Facebook and Facebook by that time just began to scale their business internationally. They wanted to get to this 1 billion users platform that they went then and successfully became and he was one of the guys who you know, had to focus his team on the core vision of the company. Every single time, it's so important to absolutely adjust the company if you want to scale it because every country has a totally different culture, right? So for example, in Japan, it was important for Facebook that not only there is maybe your nickname, full name, and which university you go, but also the blood type. Yes, you might laugh behind this camera, but I'm telling you, this is a true stories that I got through the research by Shamas. So I believe that, you know, this brought him to a very, very, you know, status where he thinks that from now on, I can very much influence companies and helping them to scale and understand how their problems can be brought down and their exposure brought up. And then he became a venture capitalist and you know, the rest is history. With his social capital as CEO, he began really to invest into companies. And I believe if you are a venture capitalist, okay, and you have your first SPAC company that was uh, the one that merged with Virgin Galactic, you have so much selection that you go through and so much options. And then he went for Virgin Galactic. He saw something that is absolutely unique. And I believe that, you know, Shamas is a very, very calculated player out there. He is actually a poker player as well. You know, so he liked to calculate his risk and his opinions and his challenges, you know. So as you can see, 
it's a chess player per se. And I believe that this guy on the top of the board is very, very important, guys. This is such a great pleasure to have him on board, to have him not only committed by himself and thinking, you know, he can make uh, a good amount of funds, but he risking a very big amount of his private wealth. Even when he is billionaire, you know, most billionaires having their wealth locked up into equity in other companies. So putting 100 million cash into the deal, I think is a big deal. And therefore, I think that we have a very, very great chairman of the board for this company. If we're talking about George Whitesides, I think we are talking about a builder. If you are going into his LinkedIn page, then you see that he is not only more than 10 years with Virgin Galactic already and counts the one of the longest employees of this company, but also he worked as chief of staff at NASA. And I think when you go through the more of the endorsements on uh, from other users, so maybe co-workers or, or colleagues, then you see that they are endorsing his system engineering skills, his leadership skills, as well as his aerospace skills, which is always a good sign. Now, on the other side, I want to tell you also what does it mean to have a builder on board. If you are thinking about a very famous company called Apple, they had the visionary Steve Jobs on the top of the chain who had a very broad vision. Sometimes, you know, thought about the experience first, then about the technology or thought that you should think different. And behind him was Tim Cook. Tim Cook is one of the best COOs I have ever experienced and what he built after Steve Jobs was a great and very profitable and one of the most wealthy corporations in the whole world. So you need this kind of people that are, you know, leading the operations and I think this is George Whitesides in this case. He is fantastic in what he has done to scale the business, to bring it where it is and now he is concentrating with the core team of engineers to bring the next couple of challenges ahead which are of engineering nature. So I believe that this is a fantastic move for all of them and in the conclusion you can basically say it at one sentence that Virgin Galactic has a very, very, very fantastic leadership team. Now, if you want to know more about that or discuss with other guys, then check out my Discord channel. This is the membership that you can get here on Wolf of Dubai. Maybe the best membership that is out there in the stock investing world on YouTube. So click the join button below. There's three tiers from supporting the channel, even up to 101 with me. So check it out. I love you guys and thank you very much for watching.